So let's get all up to speed on the latest gamer drama since I'm not posting videos and don't have anything online right now, which reminds me that I need to do that like today to keep my channel active and growing. I need to keep posting and I keep blogging. But like I said, into a channel update, it's a little harder to stop and do videos and I do them and I'm gonna keep doing them. But probably to do less of them than I was for a minute there. And that's just the way how it's gonna be. So the latest uh, game drama, gamer drama stuff is about the Steam Workshop and a company called Valve stepping in to say, hey, Steam Workshop people who create free game mods. Real quick, if anyone's lost, game mods are where someone at home like me kind of like makes a blog or a YouTube video, except it like works with a certain game, and then they just like put it out there for people to take for free and put into their game. And it does everything from changing your color of your hair to something silly that's not in the game originally to something like create a whole new uh, original character named Eric and having him be your companion and you go to some new place where Eric shows you his past and you travel with Eric everywhere you go. Like it ranges a great deal what a mod is, but it's basically user generated content that's designed to be for free to just add to the game if you want to. That's the vast majority of what game mods are. Well, Steam Workshop is one of many places where you can get those things and go join up and get into the scene of the game modding stuff and Valve wanted to turn it all into just pay for and what they were proposing wasn't the craziest thing I've ever heard and wasn't that dumb or anything a lot of it was the execution was atrocious they wanted to screw the game modders themselves like out of any and all money pretty much entirely you know like they were presenting this ridiculously unfair contract and the gaming community jumped up my people people I've mentioned jumped up in the past few days when I was out doing other things in IRL jumped up and said hell no Steam Workshop we're not having it hell no and Valve is backed off and they pulled it out and it's all going away by the look of it and that's a good thing because yeah this is what they're trying to do with every industry these days they don't want you around whoever you are if you're not signed up if you're not sponsored with Bethesda and you do a lot of Fallout content or Skyrim content, they don't want you around. That pisses them off. The fair use doctrine, all that shit, it doesn't matter who we're talking about. I love Bethesda. I love Valve. It's just the way how money works, people. They don't want you around. They can't guarantee that you won't suddenly start mocking their product in some way that makes them get upset, cry into pillows at night. Like, they can't guarantee that, so they don't really want you doing it, and there's nothing they can do to stop you. And that's a lot of why they want things like pay for mods. They want you, when you go online, to feel like you're working a job for Bethesda when you ain't getting paid nothing but slave labor wages to do the exact same thing that you would like do anyway for free. And then on top of that, when you create all these paywalls, it's just like anything on the internet. You just kind of cut out a bunch of the audience. Some people are going to pay for those things, like game mods and things like that. Like, yes, they will. Yes, they absolutely will. But it's not that many people. It's It kills the community aspects, like, for good. If you set up all these paywalls, even if there's still the free mods over there and the pay mods over here, people are just gonna be like, fuck it. I'm just gonna go on, like, Mod DB and deal with old games rather than, like, be here where I'm gonna constantly get asked, how long until you subscribe? How long until you subscribe? How long until you subscribe? subscribe. You know, it's just like they people won't deal with it all the time. They'll just walk away and go somewhere else and do something else because it's not a medium that wants them around. They're not there to do game modding anymore. They're there to just make money and that's it. And so that's the whole thing that was dumb, was they were trying to turn something that's always just kind of been this organic fan base kind of thing around video gaming, which is game modding and game mod communities. They were trying to take that and turn it into just one more profit model. And thankfully, people like MXR, people like Gopher, people like Boogie jumped up and said, hell no, we're not doing that. If you do that, we're going to start causing all kinds of problems for you and your company. Don't do it. Don't do it. And they did Valve backed off like a day ago or so. So that's some kind of recent drama stuff that happened in gaming. It's very similar 
to the uh, Gamergate controversy, except it's much more encapsulated and it kind of happened like just in the past few days and it's kind of over now. But it's the same kind of thing where people got together, got angry, angry about something online and then got together and like made it clear like they were going to do something about it if these things didn't change. And then what do you know, the companies involved, the people who stood to lose or make money from these things are listening to you when you put a bunch of shit online and use their company's name and do a bunch of video products and a bunch of blog products and a bunch of online products and put them all over public feeds and it's all talking about Valve and Steam Workshop. They fucking heard about it or they actually saw it like straight from you. So yeah, that's the thing to understand here is we do have a good deal of power here in the new media. We are not all powerful. We are are just voices but at the same time it's like voices are powerful things and this is a good example of where the gaming community's voices stood up in defense for the modding community's right to exist at all and they all seem to understand exactly what I understand which is if you slap paywalls out in this kind of context and this kind of thing you're just gonna get everyone walking away and just saying screw it I'm not gonna even post anything I'm not gonna do it anymore I'm just gonna make mods on my own in my own time and I'm not gonna go on there and do that anymore and that's that's the whole issue is like you know you want people of all levels of seriousness from screwing around to like I'm convinced I'm gonna get rich off this like engaged in these kinds of online free publishing communities you want like everyone at the table and that's exactly what Valve and the Steam Workshop were going to either intentionally or unintentionally end up destroying and the existing internet community and the game Gamers that are actual gamers out there stood up and said, Hell no, Skyrim is sacred. Dare not touch thee, lest ye want an arrow to the knee. So that was cool. Valve, more than Bethesda, is the company involved here. And they did indeed take an arrow straight to the knee. Ouch. But it's all right. I was trying to remind everyone about this in the comments under some of these videos in question. It's all right. This is a spat. But it's important to recognize that the gaming audience, you know, gamers, like people who spend money on video games, like frequently and probably will throughout their entire life. Gamers, those people. We are married, is the way to understand this. We are married with a ring on our finger and the whole damn white picket fence going on to companies like Valve and Bethesda. We are married and there's no going around it. We just are married, us gamers and those certain specific gaming companies. But this was a big spat. This was a drop down drag out fight. You know, maybe even the cops were called in on this one. But we're good. Everyone has calmed down. Everyone has made amends. There has been hugs and kisses and letters exchanged exchanged and nobody wants a restraining order and everybody's gonna get laid tonight so it's okay we're good this was a bad moment where the gaming industry made themselves look bad for the millionth damn time to their fan base but in terms of like the end result this was a good thing the industry still responds to pressure the industry still gives a damn what we the audience thinks to whatever degree that we can actually affect we're still in control of what we're in control of. And that was my message about uh, Gamergate in past videos is that was all very cool but it's also like the most you could get out of it already happened because the main thing to get out of that kind of stuff is what kind of effect do you actually have when you try and affect the industry. Well, Gamergate did that quite effectively. We just saw it again with no hashtag movement. We just saw it again with just the same, like, basis of just videos and people talking. Nothing more than that. Just online communications all over the place. And they were willing to stop and back off and do something different than what they were planning to do there. They shut the shit down. So that's a good thing. The, uh, people in question, who I don't know the specific names of, at the Steam Workshop and at the game studio of Valve, deserve to be commended for this revision of a bad policy. That is a good thing. Thank you very much for being reasonable and responsive individuals. We love you now. Don't ever do this to us again. Freedom, that's what I need now.